Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 52 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. Now in the last tutorial we looked at uh, what thresholding and segmentations were and how to do it in a manual way and how to do in an automated way basically by using Otsu to find out what the threshold value is and automatically separating or binarizing your image. Now in this tutorial, let's actually build on that, meaning instead of binarizing the image, what if we have three, four, five, six different regions of interest that we are interested in segmenting? So this tutorial, again, uh, uses a variation of Otsu to do exactly the same task. And then let's actually take it a bit further by understanding a few morphological operations by cleaning up the segmented image. So first of all, just to provide again a quick background, this is what we saw before, right? In the previous tutorial, we have an image, we want to binarize it or we want to segment it. So in this case, I'm using one single threshold to say, okay, bright pixels versus not bright pixels. But most of the time we have more than one region of interest. So how do we get instead of to this binarized state, but how do we get our uh, images to this state where we have four different regions that are clearly separated or segmented. So again, this tutorial is all about getting there, but one thing I should also highlight is when you apply your Otsu or binarize your image, eventually we are going to binarize our image for each segment, right? Uh, we are going to show all the pixels with this uh, bright regions versus not bright, dark gray versus not dark gray dark versus not dark and so on. So every individual region you're looking at either that's positive or negative, you know, for that pixel. Okay, so when, as you're doing this binarization process, of course you'll run into, if your images are not clean enough, especially if you have a lot of noise, first of all, you have to clean up the noise, but then it's quite common for us to see some of these pixels that are hanging out most of them probably a single pixel or two pixels. So to clean this up, again, you're probably already familiar if you use uh, uh, Zeiss's Zen software, Zen Light, again, go ahead and download it, it's free. Just Google search for Zen Light, Zeiss, uh, L-I-T-E for light. And then it's a great program for uh, you know image processing. Now, uh, if you already use ImageJ, for example, you pro may have actually used this. Now, uh, these operations, which is erosion, okay? If you erode, it takes one pixel away, uh, as you can see in this image. And but just by doing erosion, it cleaned up my image quite a bit because it's removing one pixel. Now, if you want to do uh, quantify object sizes, for example, uh, and if you want to get accurate uh, representation of your segmentation, then you cannot just keep eroding, right? You have to put the pixels back. So one of the tricks that we use is erode the image and then dilate it by one pixel. Dilation is just adding that pixel back, okay? So some of the large features, they remain intact and the noise gets cleaned. So this operation of erosion followed by dilation is called opening. And if you do exactly opposite, dilate and then erode, it's called closing. And of course, skeletonizing is you keep eroding until you reach the single pixel level. So that's called, uh, uh, you know, skeletonizing. Okay, so with that knowledge, let's actually exit out of the screen and jump into the code and uh, have a quick look at uh, the code. Again, this is very similar to the one we have used the last time, except I changed the input image to make it a bit more interesting. This is the same image I used in the presentation. Uh, if, if you don't have a lot of time to watch this entire tutorial, you want one thing out of this, let me tell you, I'm gonna use threshold multi otsu to actually do multiple thresholding. So now, there you go, you can save your time, but I'm gonna show you a couple more tricks. So please stay tuned. So let's go ahead and run these lines uh, again, uh, nothing new here. And let's read an image as grayscale here. Again, this is a grayscale image. If it's not a grayscale image, and again, please watch one of my previous tutorials in terms of how to work with uh, color images. Again, you can work in the RGB space or you can actually convert the image into HSV and only use the value space in the HSV, uh, you know, uh, value channel in the HSV space. Okay, for now, we're reading this image as a grayscale. If you look up here, it says 653 by 734 and unsigned integer eight. Everything looks fine. Black and white image uh, or a grayscale image. Now, originally I added a couple of lines of code. Uh, in case the image is noisy, when you do segmentation, the results would be uh, not very ideal. 
So go ahead and denoise it. Again, I, I did uh, uh, three or four, uh, even I think five uh, videos on denoising. Please watch those tutorials to find the best one. I like the uh, denoise TV shamble. Uh, so I tend to use that quite often or non-local means, but go ahead and clean up your image if it requires it. But first, let's see how it looks like without cleaning up. Now, we need to get a quick understanding of how the image looks like. So let's go ahead and have a quick look. And if I go switch to plots, here is how my image looks like. So right away, I can say I have one, two, three, and a dark region, four. Maybe five, but four for sure, okay? Different regions. But let's go ahead and look at the histogram. I explained this in the last tutorial. The way you plot it is take your array and flatten it out, okay? Dot flat and then uh, plot all the values. Uh, and when you flatten it out again, you're converting a 2D array into just one dimension, okay? And let's do 100 bins and plot all the way from zero to 255 because this is eight bit uh, image. So let's plot it. And here is how the plot looks like, okay? Uh, histogram looks like. So like we, you know, guessed, you have probably, you know, one region right here that represents dark and another one, three and four, at least four different regions. If you wanna slice it into more, you can, but then the uh, result will get a bit messy. Let's start with four, okay? Now, what are these four regions? Again, let's do a manual segmentation and also let's do a multi-otsu, which is automatic segmentation. The manual, you know, uh, we did this again in the last tutorial, but only for binary case. Now let's do it for more than binary. So region one, I'm defining something as region one, which is all the, values from my image. Again, what is my image? It's an array of unsigned integers of size 653 by 734 with values between zero to 255. Now with this, I'm saying that create a new array called region one. In fact, if I run this line, you should see it created a new array of region one, which is a Boolean array of the same size as the original image size. Again, it's Boolean because it's either saying false or true. If I open this, it should have false values or you see occasionally it's showing me true values. What does that mean? Well, because we have a condition here, it's returning a Boolean uh, result. What condition do we have? Look at the array called image and anything that's greater than or equal to zero, all pixel values and pixel value less than 75, okay? Then this is true, okay? If this condition holds true, then that entry would be true. And then I created region two, 75 to 140. Why am I doing this? Because I looked at this zero to 75-ish, okay? And 75 to 140, I think, is somewhere in between these two. And uh, 140 to 200 is right here, and then 200 and above, 200 to 255. So I'm basically manually dividing this, okay? So let's run these lines. Now we should see all of our four different regions, one, two, three, four, and they're all Boolean arrays. Now what I'm trying to do is actually put all of these together into one single array. Again, this is nothing but array manipulations. Uh, you'll get much better at NumPy array if you do these type of exercises, believe me. So I am now creating an array called all regions, which is nothing but a bunch of zeros, okay? And into what shape? Into the shape of my image, okay? Image shape zero, image shape one. By the way, if you want what is image shape, let's go ahead and do what is image shape, img.shape. This is shape of our image is 653 and 734. That's exactly what I'm doing here. My shape of the image is, instead of typing 653, I just did this because my input image may change, right? So look at the shape of my image and the zeroth dimension, which is 653, okay, is the value that goes in here. And then the value that goes in here is 734 and three channel image. So all I'm doing is a NumPy array that has all zeros with this shape. So if I run this line, hopefully that should clear up any, if you have any doubts. If I run that line, and this is called all regions, let me open all regions. You see, if I go to my channel number two, which is the RGB channel, zeros, 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 everything. Wherever you see, it's all zeros. Why did I do this? Because I want to fill this with a bunch of other values. Why am I doing that? First of all, my all regions, region one equals to one zero zero. I'm basically saying, okay, all red pixels 
is coming from region one. Green pixels re correspond to region two. Blue pixels correspond to region three. And region four is red and green, which should be yellow in this case, okay? And then show all regions image. Again, think about this logic here. Go ahead and do it yourself so you can see how the image looks like. There you go. So red, green, green is all regions too, blue and yellow, okay? Now if you, uh, you can change the colors if you want. Again, this is just a mixture of these. Okay, so this is a manual way of doing things, but let's do this in an automated way. And again, you need the latest scikit image to do this because this threshold multi otsu is not available, I think, on versions 16 and below. Now I'm using version 17 of scikit image, so this is available. I think even in 16, this is available, but the ones 15 and before, you don't have that uh, option. So I'm gonna use threshold multi otsu How are we going to use it? It's very simple. Here, you see all this exercise that we did in terms of finding out, plotting the histogram, nothing. Let's uh, go back to our variable explorer and just run this single line right there. It's applying this threshold multi otsu on our original image our original image right there, grayscale image, with four different classes. So it just divides this into four different regions. That's all. So we should get three threshold values. Okay, so let's run this line. And now you should see our threshold values, our three threshold values, 85, 136, and 197. Why only three? Because obviously it's implied that uh, the values go from 0 to 85, 85 to 136, 136 to 197, and 197 to 255. Previously, when we looked at the image, we said 0 to 75, 85, not that bad. And we said uh, 75 to 140, it's actually 136 seems to be optimal. And uh, we picked a value of 200, 197 seems to be optimal. This, so this is very close to our human way of identifying things, probably a bit more repeatable than our human way, because if I come back tomorrow and I look at the same histogram, I would say, well, what was I thinking? It's not, it's not 75, it's probably 70 or something else, okay? Anyway, so now that we know the threshold values, remember this np.digitize from my previous tutorial. Again, I, I please go ahead and watch it if you haven't already, but np.digitize, it assigns values of zero, one, two, three. Okay, so, so far, let's clean everything up. Let's start from a clean slate. And remember, this is all manual. You can forget that. The reason I showed manual is so you know what is actually happening behind the scenes. Let's only run these lines. So we have an image to work with. Okay, we have an input image. And now let's apply the threshold multi also. And now we have the threshold values. And what do we do? Once we have threshold values, instead of writing all of these lines that we did, all we need to do is regions equals to np.digitize. As part of NumPy library, you have a function called digitize, and we are going to apply that on our original image with the number of bins as many as the ones that the thresholds, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 reflected basically from our image or calculated from our image and this number of bins should be a numpy array and luckily when you do thresholds equals to threshold multi otsu it already gives you a numpy array look at this up here 85 136 197 in square brackets that's a numpy array so we're all good here so let's go ahead and run this oops run this line and then plot Okay, so let's look at the plot and there you go. It's digitized. It looks like this image that we did before, but much better, okay? But in this case, the values are automatically coming from mp.digitize. In fact, if you go ahead and look at our regions, our regions here, the values are zero, one, two, three. Zero, one, two, three. So for each region, it's assigning a value of either zero, one, or two, or three. So this is a great segmentation. Now you can still say, okay, my segment one is uh, the image with uh, where all the regions have value of zero. If the values of regions is one, two, and three, you can still do this, yeah? And assign it to different segments. Uh, and the reason why I'm doing this is, I'll show that in a second. If uh, you look at, your uh, different segments. For example, if you only want to 
uh, apply uh, you know erosion and dilation yeah morphological operations uh, to one of these regions then you can extract individual regions and then apply that in this case I'm applying opening and closing to each of these image and again how do you apply that opening is part of for example SumPy SumPy SciPy ND image library I'm importing it as ND okay and as part of ND, we have binary opening, we have binary closing, they have erosion, they have dilation, everything. Again, go ahead and look at the documentation of ND image and try to find out what else it can do. But so I'm applying ND.binary opening to my segment one with my to my segment one with a kernel of three by three. OK, again, these are the things that you can change. And then once it's done, I'm going to close, apply a closing operation on the opened image, you see my input here is the opened image with np.1s 3 by 3 okay? So this is the kernel I am applying. So I did the same to segment 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then I did exactly the same that I did in the last tutorial, which is create an array, a blank array. Sorry, create a blank array with all zeros with the shape of our input image and three channels and merge all the channels so it looks good for visualization purposes. So let's run this and then visualize it. There you go. So this is the final result right there after erosion and dilation. You see, let me switch back and forth between these images. You see a nice difference between these two. If I go back and forth between, it's tough to see here, but there is a, a difference over there. And I'm finally saving this image so I can kind of open it up later. And, and this is, I mean, obviously you want to save your images and I'm using plt.imsave to save this image. Okay, so hopefully you learned, again, the key message here, two key messages. One, practice NumPy so you can actually play with these numbers uh, easily. And again, I wanted to introduce this type of logical way of actually uh, creating your binarizing, you know, your images. So hopefully you learned that, but there is an easier way to do your multi uh, thresholding again by using threshold multi also. And this literally came out in version 16 of, uh, of uh, scikit image. Before that, if you wanted multi, multi, multiple way of doing this, you have to do something of this sort. Okay. But luckily we have this now. And once you have this again, uh, thanks to np.digitize, you can actually automatically digitize these images, meaning apply some conditions like this on your original image and then extract your separate regions. This is how you do multi uh, segmenting and again please play with your own images so thank you very much for your attention again uh, as usual I advise you to subscribe to this channel so you are notified whenever we upload new content onto our YouTube channel so thank you very very much for your attention and in the next tutorial let's uh, talk about a different topic